three hour drive to the end of the earth and someone's asked me this interesting question. So the first question this person asked me was, if you put different cables for a CT, will it measure the current? My response was, if you put one cable with 10 amps through the CT, I'm gonna call it a CT because it's just fucking easier. Yeah, it'll measure with 10 amps. If you put two cables through a CT with 10 amps on, it'll measure 20 amps. If you put three cables through a CT with 10 amps on, it'll measure 30 amps. If you put 100 cables with 10 amps on, or 100 cables with one amp on, it'll measure 100 amps, yeah? Of that fact, I'm nearly certain. Then I got asked, if you put three cables through it, and they're all pulling 10 amps, but they're on different phases, does it show 30 or does it show 10? Because the waveform's peaking. I genuinely don't know. Maybe I've had a long day. I have had a long day. I'm a tagger. Kevin, this one to help me out. But I appreciate your knowledge as well. So the question's going to be, you've got three cables. Yeah. All taking 10 amps, all on the same phase. We know that will measure 30 amps. Then you've got three cables on three different phases, all taking 10 amps. What is it? 10... 30 or another? I, I generally don't know what the answer is. I'm just confused right now. Um, but my guess is, my working out, my guess is, if you've got three phases and every single one of those has got 10 amps on, your neutral has only ever got 10 amps on it because your waveform only peaks 50 times a second in a staggered arrangement with the other three phases, which have all got 10 amps on. So even though there's only, even though you've got 10 amps per phase, there's only ever 10 amps going to your neutral, because otherwise your neutral cable would need to be bigger, because you're not creating energy all the time, are you? So I'm guessing the answer is you need three phases CTs to measure three phases current, because if you put it around all of them, It'll only ever measure 10 amps, 10 amps, 10 amps, even though it's three of them. So that makes sense. Am I crap? I actually called that story last night um, before I got here, but I was so deep, dark in the Lake District that it wouldn't send. So I've only sent this morning. Someone's messaging me says they think it's zero because they cancel each other out. I ain't got a fucking clue. I'm still in the dark. I will post the answer and I'm going to go over. Um, I've realised that I keep talking about CTs and current stuff and some people are like, what the fuck's a CT? So the next set of stories, I'm going to go over all that. And what I'll do is I'll come back to answer this question later on today. I'm now I'm going to explain CTs and current because some people quite rightly are saying, I don't know what that is. And what I try to do is I try to make all these stories so that my mate Johnny Pitchfork could understand because he's thick, he's not an electrician. And if he then sees me and explains that he learnt something out of it, I know I'm a good teacher. I'm going to start explaining amps by explaining amps, yeah? I use the water analogy. So this is a water wheel, yeah? So we've got a possibility of hitting here with a jet of water and we've got a load of water underneath it here. So let's say, for example, the water wheel is powered by the water. First of all, the voltage is the pressure of the water, how much it can push. The current, the amps, would be the volume of the water, how much force it has. Let me explain that on my Gucci drawing. Just for a moment, pretend this is a big water wheel like you see on the side of old mills and shit, yeah? If you fire a garden jet washer at it here and it wasn't in the water, it was free to spin, there's a good chance that garden jet wash might gently push it round, yeah? Because it's got loads and loads of pressure. It's got loads and loads of voltage. However, this garden jet wash would spin this wheel if it was free to spin. However, if it had any load on it, it wouldn't move it. Now, if you think if you put that water in a river, which is moving really, really, really slowly, i.e. there's not a lot of voltage, but there's huge amounts of water pushing onto this vein and forcing it round, then pushing onto that vein and forcing it round, then it would turn and it would easily turn a load. That is amps. Amps is the power. Vol uh, voltage is the pressure. A bit of a side quest here, I'm explaining voltage. Voltage is the pressure. If I want to put a power supply... 11 miles over there i'm not gonna be able to do it with lv because the rough rule of thumb with voltage is 1000 volts per kilometer 
So if I want to put a substation 11 miles that way, and I use 11,000 volts, that's 11,000 volts, 11,000 kilometers, that means you get the 11,000 volts. If it's over 20 miles away, I need to use 33 kV, and so on and so forth. That's how voltage works. But that's the pressure. We're dealing with the power, which is the amps. So in this case, whatever voltage this circuit's running at, it doesn't matter. This amp, this amp, this lamp is one amp. So I need to put one amp to it. The one amp will make it bright, yeah? Because the power is being used to make the brightness. So it's got a load. The load is one amp, and that power is used to create, turn the electricity to what you want, and in this case, light. So in this circuit, it's dead easy. It powers the lamp. The lamp takes one amp, which is a ridiculous figure, and the light comes out. Because light is easy. Now let's use something a bit more exciting, like a motor, yeah? On this circuit, the motor takes 100 amps because the motor's turning something. It needs more oomph, it needs more power, so it needs more amps. So that's where your amps come from. Stuff that doesn't do much can be low ampage. Stuff that does a lot will be higher ampage. But if you put 100 of these lights in a row, like you would do, really bad wiring like that, that's now two amps, and it'd be three, four, five, six. So you could have 100 lamps of lighting to equal this motor but it's the same thing it's the same power required because now you're making lots of light against one mechanical movement and that's roughly where our amps work yeah i hope that makes sense it doesn't matter that there's a load or how big or small the load is in theory we just want to measure what the load is actually taking is that lamp actually taking one amp or is that motor actually taking 100 amps keep it single face now it makes life a bit easier so what's the difference between measuring a small current and a large current and the instruments we use to do that and obviously when you get to big currents how's that even going to work let's look at it on a small scale so back to this circuit yeah if we want to measure if we don't know look there's not written here how many amps is if we want to know the loading that this is pulling we're to measure the amps so what we can do is we can break into a circuit we remove this bit here and we put our amp meter in which is a two pole device and we put that amp meter in series down here i've drawn it in series so it comes from a negative which feeds a load then the positive goes through the amp meter to the positive, and then we can read the amps. However, if this is one amp, you'll probably be able to get an instrument that can measure one amp in series. If this is 100 amps or 1,000 amps, you're not going to get an amp meter that can go in series, and you've got to start dismantling the circuit and putting all the power through your instrument. This soon becomes a very dodgy way to do things. There's another thing called a shunt, which I'm not going to go into, yeah? But what we need is a way of measuring the current on this circuit here without disturbing the circuit. And that's where we start to use things called CTs. That's what CTs do, yeah? Now, for the rest of this video, I'm gonna explain it how I understand it because that's how I understand it and I can't explain it the other way, yeah? We already know from yesterday that the Chevenar new ones aren't CTs. They're what called Ros Roskowski coils or something like that. But I'm going to blanket them under the CTs in a way that makes sense to me so that I can understand it and while I've generalised. So, the crack is, you've got a massive thick cable, yeah? Let's pretend it's the steering wheel of this van and the current's flowing through here and you need to measure it. How do you do that? Well, you use a CT. And what a CT does, it's a coil of cable that clamps round. If it clamps round the cable like that, it's called a split CT or an open CT. And if, the K, if it's a solid loop and the cable has to be passed through it, it's called a closed CT. Obviously, CTs that are open or split are loads easy to retrofit. So either way, you need to know is it goes around the cable. Come to one of our sites. This is the substation, one of the sites I work on, yeah? There's 11 kV switch gear in there that comes from our site where we generate electricity. As you can see, the switch gear is fucking massive, right? bigger than all them fucking fanny breakers you ass bashing bastards fuck around with because it's 11,000 volts as you can see it's quite big what you'll see over here is that's the metering cabinet for it the meter in there look is exactly the same size as any normal meter so how the fuck does that work because obviously these cables and these voltages are big but these voltages and these amps and these meters over here are small well it's dead simple so if you want to find out how it works sign up to my business course at 15.99 not really just kidding what we do is to measure big voltages and big currents because voltage sort of comes into it as well in this situation here is we take the primary voltage or primary current which is what we want to measure and then we simply reduce it make it smaller so on the voltage i think they use a tenth 
don't quote me on that. There's a way of doing it over here. I can't remember what it is. I think it's one to 100, yeah? So we have a voltage transformer in this substation that reduces the 11,000 volts to 111 volts because it's totally proportional. So if it goes up a little bit here, that proportional voltage will go up a little bit. If it goes down a little bit, the proportional voltage goes down a little bit. Then what we do is we measure the current that's on the cables and then we use CTs to provide a proportional value over here. So say it's say it's 100 amp to 5 amp, which is a very popular CT size. They always go to 5 amps, yeah, in normal old CTs. Every 100 amps we measure here, is five amps over there so 50 amps here run out of story if it's 50 amps there and it's 100 to 5 over there it's two and a half amps if it's 25 amps here over there it's 1.25 amps i think that's all right yeah so all we're doing is taking a percentage of the primary current or voltage reducing it by a known figure and coming out with a proportional value on the secondary side of the transformer think of it like a model railway yeah you know the big fuck off steam trains you see they're one to one scale they're this yeah, when you go to those little model villages and they have the little steam trains pumping around that I don't know, one eight scale, they're exactly the same as the big steam engine. They work in exactly the same way. You put coal and water in them, they chug around on tracks. The simple fact is it all works because it's exactly one eight scale of the real thing. And it's the same here, except these, I believe, I think the voltage is one hundredth. Because I think 11,000 volts becomes 111 volts. Don't quote me on that. I might be wrong, but that's roughly how it works. Either way, the voltage becomes proportional. So that, say, the 100 amps might become 5 amps. I'm not taking too close to meters because they've got the M-pan numbers and all shit like that. And they don't want to show you, yeah? Also, in here, we've got a normal meter, the meter. And we've got a check meter next to it. So if we argue that this is wrong, they've got something else to go off. That's why there's two in there. No other reason. But all you need to know is, it's a proportional value. Remember the steam train. Everything is now, everything that was big, like in here, is now smaller. And we can deal with those smaller voltages through smaller equipment. The good news is, I've got the replacement meat for that, so I can show you that in the van and explain how it works even more. And as look, whatever, in here, look, this little voltage test box. So it's got 0 to 150 volts. Gray to black on the VTs is 111 volts. Brown to black is 111 volts. So I think I'm right in saying that it's, it's um, the voltage is one tenth. No, one one hundredth. 11,000 volts becomes 111 volts, yeah? Up here on the meter lock, there's something to do with CTs up there, but I don't really understand what it means. I don't know, so I'm not gonna go into it, but I know it's taking a proportional value off a of CT to make the meter work. And here's all your test points and all that bollocks, yeah? I'll just come here for the numbers off the meters, which you can't see, because I'm changing the meters out, but I'll show you the new meter, because there's no information on that. And as you can see down there, look, that cable will house all the CT cables, which will be six pairs, I think, uh, three pairs, and then the four voltage lines are all on that cable. So all the meters, the 11,000 volts, at fucking how many amps is being done by that little tiny armor there, so. So I like to refer to them as CTs, but CT to me means two things, yeah? Current transformer, a transformer, that substation there has got current transformers in it and voltage transformers in it. And that's what gets you the proportional level. So the transformer there for voltage brings it down from 11,000 to 111. And the CTs, for example, bring it down from 100 amps to five amps. So the little tiny meter can handle it. That is a current transformer or a voltage transformer. It is directly transforming the voltage into a lower or possibly higher voltage. That's all a transformer does. The other option is, some people might pick me up for terminology in this, but this is our answer, yeah? The other CT is a current transducer. The current transducer, or maybe even a voltage transducer, or a level transducer, or any type of fucking transducer, takes a value of something, in this case, amps, and it proportionally spits it out the other end in another readable scale. So that could be milliamps, millivolts, um, data, I don't fucking know anything, but a transducer is always doing some sort of funky electronic conversion and is much more complicated than transform, which is effectively just a series of copper windings. A transducer will always have some sort of electrical fucking voodoo shit going off, which is why I always refer to the Chevenar new rope CTs as rope CTs because it's just what people understand. Actually, they were gasky cores, whatever the fuck they're called, and what they're doing is. They're pretending to be a CT, measuring some current. 
So they pretend to be a CT, then through their electronic gubbins, they pump out a value or data. If it's data, it's just a number. If it's a value, will be a proportional level of some other sort of thing like milliamps, millivolts, um, their popular flavours, some sort of amps. I don't fucking know, but a transducer is like a doing a computer job. It's translating it into another value. So the main thing about these proportional values is your metering, every meter is built to the same standards and they have been in the UK for fucking years. If you want a meter, a single socket outlet, you can use the same meter you would use for a fucking output on a 400 kV power station because you are proportionally turning it into five volts. So it doesn't matter if it's zero to one amp CT or zero to a billion amp CT, it will always reduce it by transforming to zero to five amps so the meter can read it. You then tell the meter the proportion you are using and it does the maths and works it back out for you. So you take your big steam engine and measure it, divide all the, divide all the measure. Yeah, so you take your big steam engine or your aeroplane or your car and you measure it. Then you divide it by 100 and you build it again. You get a 100, 1 to 100 scale model. Then if you wanted to, you can measure those scale models and make them 100 times bigger and you end up with a real size one again. Nothing gets lost in the translation as long as the scaling is kept right, but you get a proportional value that is this big to this big. Then you ain't got to worry about big cables or anything, have you? Bosh, that's it. That's all it is to CTs. If anyone's got any questions, I'll try and answer them regarding CTs. Answer time. If you put a rope CT, whatever it's fucking called, Rogaski call, around all three phases of a supply, the meter will read zero. That wasn't an answer on purpose to see if anyone would challenge me. Two people did challenge me. So well done them. Yeah, it's zero. They cancel each other out. The maths are about to follow by Kev at Savon Arnu, whose name I'll learn to pronounce correctly eventually. He's done a, he did a spreadsheet for me, which is brilliant, even though I was having a bit of a wind up. But yeah, he's banged it up. Um, they cancel each other out. Same as if you get the live and neutral of, a, of an appliance and put a CT around them, you won't get any reading, it'll cancel each other out unless you've got earthly kids that's a completely different story. So yeah, well to the people that challenged me and got the answer that was zero right and uh, I'll put the mask up next. I'm doing some van racking today. I've painted it all black apart from where it glues together.